The movie begins with police detective Alex Cross and his two team members, Tommy Kane and Monica Ashey, conducting a raid in an empty building where criminals are hiding. They engage in a gunfight, but eventually manage to apprehend the criminals. Once their mission is accomplished, they all head home. The following day, a hitman named Picasso receives a new assignment from his client. He stands in front of a building, waiting for his client to send the payment before starting the operation. After confirming the money transfer, Picasso goes to an underground fighting arena where his target, a wealthy woman named Anna, is located. Inside the building, Picasso approaches the event organizer and offers him a significant sum of money to allow him to fight the reigning champion in the venue. Impressed by the amount, the event organizer agrees to let Picasso participate in the fight. Shortly after, Picasso enters the fighting arena, stealing glances at Anna, who sits in the audience, trying to grab her attention. Before the fight kicks off, Picasso warns his opponent not to hit him unless he wants lifelong injuries. Regrettably, his warning falls on deaf ears and Picasso gets angry, ending up breaking his opponent's arm. His impressive performance in the arena further captivates Anna, who invites him to her home. At Anna's luxurious residence, several bodyguards thoroughly check Picasso before Anna invites him upstairs for a drink. Anna, intrigued by Picasso, seems to suggest spending the night together until he unexpectedly injects her with a green substance, rendering her helpless. Picasso proceeds to torture Anna to complete his mission from his client. After accomplishing his mission, Picasso eliminates all of Anna's guards and departs from the house. The next day, the police, including Alex and his team, arrive at Anna's home to begin their investigation. Tommy speculates that the murder might have involved more than one person, but Alex disagrees, believing that the perpetrator is a single individual with extraordinary abilities. While inspecting Anna's room, Alex discovers a drawing left behind by Picasso, leading him and Tommy back to the office to analyze the artwork further. After a thorough examination, Alex finds a clue pointing to Anna's business associate, Eric Neumacher, who is suspected to be Picasso's next target. In response, Alex, Tommy, and Monica hurry to Eric's office to ensure his safety. Upon their arrival, the guards initially denied them entry. Meanwhile, Picasso was sneaking into the building through the water pipe system below it, when one of Eric's guards noticed something suspicious near the fountain outside, they started to believe Alex, who had earlier warned them about the potential danger to Eric. Consequently, the detectives were allowed into Eric's office to inform him that a contract killer might be targeting him, possibly having infiltrated the building. Eric then asked Alex and his team to locate the hitman. On the other hand, Picasso was taking out several of Eric's guards who were on duty in the building. This attack made Alex aware of Picasso's presence, and he tried to corner the hitman, urging him to surrender and drop his weapon. However, Picasso slyly tossed a bomb towards Alex and his team, creating an explosion that allowed him to escape. Despite the blast, Alex and his team managed to protect Eric from the hitman's attack. As for Picasso, when he returned to his residence, he felt frustrated due to his first mission failure for his client. He also grew increasingly curious about Alex and his team, who had thwarted his mission. Meanwhile, back at the police station, the police chief questioned Alex about the contract killer who had attacked Eric's office. Alex explained that Picasso's abilities seemed similar to those of a highly trained special forces operative. He emphasized how Picasso had deceived and eliminated Anna, as well as infiltrated a building through the water pipe system. Alex also revealed that Anna and Eric were business partners in a significant project with another businessman named Giles Mercier. Upon hearing these reports, the police chief immediately instructed Alex and his team to visit Giles' residence. When they arrived at the wealthy businessman's mansion, they were warmly greeted by Giles' secretary, and Giles himself came to meet them. Alex couldn't help but notice the ruby red ring on Giles' hand and used it as a conversation starter. Giles proudly claimed that the ring was a valuable gift from the King of Dubai, which he never removed. Alex then explained the purpose of their visit, discussing Anna's death, which prompted Giles to suggest they continue the conversation elsewhere. During their discussion, Alex asked Giles if he knew the person responsible for Anna's murder and the attack on Eric. 
Giles admitted that he had no knowledge of the individual. After their conversation, Alex couldn't shake his growing suspicion of Giles, especially given the businessman's uneasiness when answering his questions. That evening, Monica, who had just returned from work, was getting ready for a shower at her home. Unbeknownst to her, Picasso had silently entered her house. He wasted no time and entered the bathroom, using his usual green liquid to kill Monica. Hours later, while Alex and his wife were having dinner at a restaurant, he received a phone call from an unknown number. It turned out to be Picasso, who threatened to kill Alex. Picasso also sent a photo of Monica, whom he had just murdered, causing Alex to worry about his family's safety. Picasso held a grudge against Alex and his team for interfering with his mission and planned to eliminate each member of the team one by one. As a warning, Picasso positioned himself on a building and shot Alex's wife from a distance. When Alex arrived and found his wife dead, he was devastated by the loss of his wife and colleague. The following day, Alex sat alone in a church, mourning his wife, when Tommy approached to offer condolences. During the funeral, Picasso secretly observed Alex from a distance while painting the detective's face. After the burial, Tommy informed Alex about the autopsy results, revealing that Monica had died from a poisonous substance often used by gangsters to eliminate their enemies. To investigate further, Alex met with a gang leader named Daramas Holiday to inquire about where gangsters could obtain the poisonous substance. Initially hesitant, Daramas eventually revealed the address of the person who produced the poison after Tommy aimed a laser at him, ready to shoot. Without wasting any time, Alex and Tommy rushed to the address provided by Daramas. They pressured the maker of the poisonous substance, Ingo, to reveal the identity of the buyer. Ingo confessed that he didn't know the buyer but agreed to show them surveillance footage of everyone who had purchased his toxic product. While examining the footage, the detective spotted Picasso, who had arrived in a black car. Alex immediately contacted his colleagues to trace Picasso's license plate, and they discovered he was heading to a building where Erich and Giles were meeting. Armed with this information, Alex and Tommy hurried to the building. Alex also called for all available police units to converge on the location to prevent Picasso's actions. However, Picasso, realizing there were many police cars around the building, escaped in a taxi to a train station. There, he encountered three men who made fun of his appearance, but ignored their taunts and boarded the train. Once on the moving train, Picasso secretly took control of the train system, allowing him to manipulate the automatic doors and stop the train at will. After successfully hijacking the train, he killed the three mocking men and fired a rocket launcher at the building where Erich and Giles were meeting. Meanwhile, the police officers guarding the building were unaware of Picasso's impending attack, and Alex and Tommy were stuck in traffic on their way to the scene. Erich and Giles had just arrived in front of the building when Picasso, armed with his rocket launcher, fired at them as they were about to enter. With his mission as success, Picasso quickly left the train and escaped in a car. During the chase, Alex and Tommy, who had tracked Picasso from the central office, intentionally crashed into his vehicle. Tommy lost consciousness due to the collision, but Alex, still awake, pursued Picasso as he entered an empty building. Alex continued to chase Picasso, who had moved to the upper floors of the building, leading to a shootout. Picasso, running out of ammunition, tried to attack Alex directly. As Picasso cornered Alex and was about to inject him with poison, a section of the building's floor collapsed, sending them both falling. Luckily, Alex survived by grabbing onto a piece of metal and was aided by the arriving Tommy. Picasso, on the other hand, died from the fall. Soon after, more of Alex's colleagues arrived to evacuate Picasso's body and tend to the injured Alex and Tommy. Although Picasso was dead, the case was not closed because the police had not yet identified the person who had hired him. A few days later, while Alex and Tommy were at their office, they received a phone call with news about the person who had hired Picasso to kill Anna and other businessmen. The client was now in Indonesia, so Alex instructed his colleagues to work with the Indonesian police to catch Picasso's client. Switching to a villa on Bali Island, Indonesia, a villa staff member rushed to hand a ringing phone to his boss. Surprisingly, the call was for Giles, who was still alive. In this call from Alex, 
Giles learned that he was exposed as the person who had hired Picasso to eliminate Erich and Anna. Alex had discovered that Giles had sent someone who looked like him to the meeting with Eric. This revelation came after the police couldn't find Giles' red diamond ring on the presumed body. During the investigation, Alex explained that Giles had killed his two business partners to take all the profits from their business with Anna and Eric. Hearing this, Giles panicked because his plan was now revealed. Shortly after, the Indonesian police, working with Alex, arrived to arrest him. During the arrest, they also found illegal drugs that Giles intended to distribute in Bali, making his legal situation even worse. Alex felt relieved that his mission was successful, and he had avenged his wife's death. In the end, the movie showed Tommy accompanying Alex back to his hometown for a vacation after they'd both got some time off. Moral lesson from the story, when chasing a bad guy that has a green substance and a rocket launcher, it's probably best to call for backup and always double-check if someone's red ring is missing before accusing them of being a villain.